Hello everyone. Many of you might have given interviews on data structures and algorithm either in the past or you might be looking forward to give one. While these interviews are one of the most common interviews in the tech recruitment process, but unfortunately, these are the most misunderstood and most dreaded interviews. So today I'll share with you what goes on or what is the person sitting on the other side of the table is looking for when taking this interview. With that, you can one, master those things. Second, you can avoid the most common pitfalls that people make in such interviews. I would also talk about why do these companies focus on these interviews. So the first thing, companies look for engineers who would measure twice and cut once. And which also leads to one common mistake that people make in the tech interviews that you end up solving the wrong problem or you start solving the problem without having understood the problem clearly. So first thing you should always make sure is that before you start solving the problem, clarify the question with the interviewer. Now, interesting thing I would share with you about these interviews is that for most of these companies, the interviewers also undergo uh, interviewer training. One part of that training is that the interviewer is not supposed to give you all the boundary conditions or all the details of the problem up front. The problem is left a little vague and the interviewer expect you to ask clarifying questions on the problem. So first mistake that you can make in an interview is not clarifying the corner cases of the problem before you start solving. The second most common mistake that people make in interviews is not thinking loudly and not collaborating with the interview. So often, like you might have been there yourself, I have been there myself, where an interviewer asks me a problem and then I'm just thinking, I'm just staring at the ceiling and I'm just thinking about solving the problem. Seems like the right approach, but it's not. The interviewer want to look at your thought process. So you have to speak loudly. Uh, you might be thinking that, you know, what are the, what are the approaches that you can take? what would be the shortcoming of that approach and how you will handle that. Interviewer want to see your entire thought process. Another mistake that happens in this stage when you are not thinking loudly is that you might have thought certain direction already but because you are not thinking loudly the interviewer might assume that you are stuck and he would, he would give you the hint. When the interviewer gives you a hint, even if you have thought of it already, he is going to make a note in his feedback that you, he had to give a hint to you before you could reach the solution yourself. Had you been thinking loudly, this wouldn't have happened. Third common mistake that people make in the interview. Jumping into writing code too early. What that leads to is, unless you have built the entire solution and have covered all the corner cases with that, if you start writing code beforehand, you would end up writing a code which is spaghetti. So you would build a basic solution and then you will think of the corner cases and then you will see that your base solution doesn't handle those and then you will have to just add patches to make sure that your code handles all the corner cases. Which leads to poor code quality, which leads to rejection in the interview. So while eventually while you might have solved the problem past and you still got a rejection because your code quality was not high, your code was not well structured. However, if you take a different approach, if you first only build the solution without jumping into writing the code, collaborate with the interviewer to ensure that you are handling all the cases and only once you and interviewer are on the same page that this is the right approach to build the solution, that is when you start writing the code. Fourth biggest mistake that people make in the interview, not dry reading your code. Now, why do company care so much about it? Every company want to hire engineers whose code do not fail on production. So before you say that you are done, you have to test your 
code extensively on all the corner cases you can think of. If you can find a corner case on which your code is not working perfectly, you can fix that. However, other way around, if you tell the interviewer that I am done and then the person points out certain cases on which your code will not run, you have already lost some points in the interview. So it is very important that you always dry run your code on all the cases that you can think of before you tell the interviewer that you are done writing the code. The fifth point, every good interviewer will ask you, do you have any question for me before ending the interview? The worst answer to do that is I have no question. Some of the good questions to ask is, would be based on what kind of work company you do. So you should always make sure that you have researched about the company which you are interviewing with. Good questions to ask would be a question about what text type do they use? Why did they choose that text type? What is the interviewer's view on certain technology that the company use? Or some of the questions around how do a particular thing work? For example, if you are interviewing at Facebook, a good question to ask would be that how does the client maintain connection for Facebook chat with the server? Is it long polling? Is it through web sockets? Or what other technology or protocol does it use? And why did they choose that? Some similar good questions to ask might be that how do team brainstorm on new ideas? Do junior engineers participate in the brainstorming process? Do engineers get a chance to take product decisions as well? The bad questions to ask in such interviews are how many hours do people have to work at the company? What is the salary that they pay to people at this company? You of course can ask such questions but a later stage definitely not good questions to ask in the tech interview. I hope that you find these small tips useful. While most of them sound very obvious, none of it is rocket science. You might be surprised that more than 90% of the rejections in the tech interviews happen because of these reasons. For particularly people who say that I had solved the problem but I got rejected. In the next upcoming video, we would be talking about what do tech companies expect in their behavioral interviews. If you want us to create a video on any particular topic, do mention it in the comment. We would try to come up with the video as soon as possible. I hope you find this video useful. Do subscribe to our channel so that you are notified about whenever we upload any new videos. Thank you so much.